around everybody i think has sort of you know, preconceived ideas and um and thoughts about how things should work and and why they should work that way and it's um i think it's hard it was certainly hard for me as a middle class person um to see things that i had not really been exposed to and, and truthfully hadn't given much thought to um i've never had to cope with a very limited amount of money to the point where I couldn't feed my family or I didn't have a formula uh, for a baby and, um, and, and I never had to sleep in a park or be frightened and that I was going to be attacked in the middle of the night and things like that and, and those are very real fears and they well, the most important thing when they arrived on the scene, there was no such, what do you call it, uh, no access to, like people don't want to go to hospital, you know, for a blister on their hand or some damn thing like that, or a small scab, but they really can come here and get a look at just in a couple of minutes, no sweat. And uh, another thing um, about street health that's uh, good, the people here, they, um, most of them have been either in the hostel system or in places like Cornerstone or uh, places like uh, 319. They know what to expect in these places and what things would be unreasonable to ask the person, people to do. Mm -hmm. I guess the design, and it was designed by people that were users. So it was designed by people who were homeless, who were marginalized, who had experienced poverty for a short or a long period of time. And I think the design has made it work. And so for me, that is living proof that people can articulate their needs, know how to have them met. And I think if you look, if we have, um, the establishment, bureaucracies, governments, or whoever, they just need to ask the question, what do you need? And they will get the right answer that will work. And I think Street Health epitomizes that. Okay, so if you want to leave them with Cheryl, I'm sure she'll hang on to them for you. Well, these, these are Canada's dispossessed. These are people who have no property, who are in general homeless or underhoused. Uh, those are people who live in rooming houses or in the hostel system or in the streets. Um, they end up here because of essentially lack of income, lack of work. And they, they're made up of people, mostly from the working class. That would be people who are around, were either um, unskilled workers or skilled workers. That means that essentially they're part of the, of the great unwashed, the, uh, probably the largest percentage of the population of Canada, would be, say, 70% of, of the population. They're made up of... Uh, Ex-farmers, ex-fishermen, um, miners. Street Health began, um, or the beginnings of Street Health started in about uh, the summer of 1986 when the church on the corner of Dundas and Sherburn was built, going to build housing on their land. And the minister and community workers such as Jacques Tremblay got together to work with the community as to what type of housing they want. And over and over again, they heard about as a secondary issue the lack of appropriate health care and the problems with the health care system and the difficulties that people had maintaining their health and getting good access to health care. Well, I think that a lot of um, mainstream health care providers, um, because of their own sort of middle class biases, which all of us subscribe to on, on some level, tend to think, tend to assume housing when they, when they deal with patients or clients. And um, a lot of the treatment or um, 
aftercare, which is prescribed for people, um, tends to be inappropriate if someone doesn't have housing. So you and I could um, go home from the emergency department uh, with a sore back and, and have three or four days of bed rest if that's what's been prescribed um, to get over this ailment. But someone who doesn't have housing can't do that. It's, it's just physically impossible for them to actually go somewhere and stay in bed for three or four days because if they're staying in shelters, they have to be out during the day and there's no place for them to do that. Um, people are, are told to go home and, and soak uh, an infected finger in you know, warm salt and water you know, three times a day and apply a, a dressing or a bandage. You or I could do that, but um, someone who's homeless doesn't have a place to keep their, their bandages. They probably can't afford to buy them. They don't have anywhere they can um, mix up salt and water and, and heat it and, and soak their finger. They don't have bathrooms. They don't have private places. They don't have access to the most fundamental things that you need, even for routine, what we would think of as very routine health maintenance activities that's just not accessible to them. And, and from the health provider end of the equation, that's not usually considered when treatment is being suggested or prescribed. Well, these people all know me around here. They do? They all know me around here, a lot of them. Yeah, they do, yeah. And, you know, little, little things. But then little things were important to the person at the time, and they looked after it. That's the part that, you know, they had that concern. The first, when I heard about street health, was here in the church. And they were, here I am here, Glenn, and I loved how they were doing the nursing. And I like how they do the nursing now, and they're good to me, all of them, Kathy's, the two Kathy's, and Eileen, Dylan. I think it's the uniqueness of a community health center that it, it truly grew and has remained after six years still a, a part of the community with the community feeling very proud of it and still having um, input into how it's run and where it goes. I mean, that gets into our whole board structure very early on. Uh, the community was very aware of the power that they wanted to have over their health center. And we set it up so that there would be 12 board of directors of which a minimum of six must have had experience with homelessness. And that's held true. And we often have more people who have experienced homelessness sitting on the board than other outside um, talents that we need to run a board. We have still open monthly board meetings that they're well attended. All right. Margaret has moved out. And it became very quick, at the, very apparent at the beginning that we needed to be seen and we were seen as a member of the community and not just coming in to do the professional hands-on part of the whole street health program that we were that we have baseball games where we hang around we have bridge games we accompany people and that we look at health in its larger context in that it's poverty it's lack of housing all those issues that affect our clients are important to us and we will advocate on their behalf with them to address those issues for them.